What do you think of when you think of ocean ecosystems? Maybe the coral reefs that are bastions of ecological diversity, or the deep sea with its mysterious ocean creatures. Or maybe you think of the ocean more as a desert, except instead of sand, there's a lot of water and not a lot of visible life. All of these ecosystems are fundamentally important, but there's one ecosystem that often goes underappreciated, and that's the mangrove forests. Mangrove forests are found at the intersection between the land and the sea. Like their name implies, they're made of trees and shrubs. However, these trees and shrubs are special. Most trees can't survive, let alone thrive, submerged in water, especially salt water. But mangroves can. How? There are a few ways. First, they found a way to keep the salt water out. Some can filter up to 90% of the salt that enters their roots. Others excrete the salt through their leaves or concentrate the salt in older leaves and bark that can simply shed off the tree. Second, they found a way to get the air they need. Plants get a lot of air they need through their roots and most of them get air from the surrounding soil. But mangroves live in an area that is pretty waterlogged and there's not a lot of air in that soil. So mangroves have adapted by lifting part of their roots out of the water. In some cases, these roots form large arches that also help stabilize the tree in the shifting soil, while other roots are smaller and act as a sort of snorkel. Either way, they figured it out. Third, they figured out a way to store fresh water. A mangrove leaf is thick with a large waxy cuticle. This cuticle prevents water from evaporating out of the leaf as easily. Small hairs cover the leaves to deflect sunlight or wind, further making sure that the water stays inside the plant. Scientists think that mangroves are originally from Southeast Asia. Now they're found all over the world, from Asia to Africa, Australia to the United States, and there's an incredible diversity of mangroves. How did these world travelers reach all of these destinations? Probably because they already come pretty travel ready. Many mangrove seeds fall off the tree once they're germinated. If it's low tide, then they begin growing immediately in the soil before the tide comes back in. If they hit the water, then they travel with the currents until they hit land again. Sometimes these seeds start growing and form roots and stems before they even fall off the parent tree. Eventually, the offspring will fall off the parent tree somehow and either grow roots where it lands or once again, just travel the waters until it finds a place to land. <laughs> Pretty cool. We should really care a lot about mangrove forests. They're incredibly important ecosystems for a lot of reasons. First, like coral reefs, they're incredibly diverse. And part of this is because they are ecosystems that are perfect for niche differentiation. That's an ecological term that's best explained with an example. So let's look at birds. Some birds can specialize to live on only one type of tree, leaving other mangroves open to other bird species. Or a bird can specialize to only live in one part of the tree, like the very top. Another bird can specialize to live in the middle and still another can specialize to live in the bottom. This niche differentiation allows a lot of different organisms to live in one place. Second, mangrove forests are nursery ecosystems for certain organisms that may spend their life either deep out at sea or in other ecosystems like coral reefs. Juvenile sharks take refuge in the mangrove forest to stay safe from larger sharks that wouldn't think twice about having them for lunch. They only venture out once they are large enough to be safe. Third, mangrove forests protect us. Beaches naturally erode because of sand, water, and storms. Mangroves help keep the sediment in place to prevent erosion and protect property. They also keep us safe during hurricanes by serving as a storm break that can mitigate damage. The fourth reason why mangroves are important is that they are a blue ecosystem. This means that they absorb more carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere than they produce, something that is critically important in the face of climate change. Mangroves and other ecosystems like them, such as seagrass beds and salt marshes, help mitigate climate change by removing carbon dioxide and storing it. As long as the mangroves are protected, then the mitigation works. 
if we destroy them, then all of that carbon that they're storing in their roots and things like that gets released into the atmosphere. The only problem is mangrove forests are in decline, an estimated 2.1% from 2000 to 2016. And probably unsurprisingly at this point, humans are kind of the reason. Beachfront property is valuable real estate and mangrove forests are among the important ecosystems that have been sacrificed for an ocean view. Now, 2.1% may not sound like a lot, but it is. However, it's also not the whole story. Even though mangrove forests can mitigate climate change, they're not immune from it. Remember how their roots rise out of the ground to help them get air? That makes them susceptible to climate change. With rising sea levels, mangrove forests can literally drown. The good news is that mangroves can acclimate to a changing climate more easily than some other species. They can migrate pretty easily, and we are already seeing migration of some mangrove forests north and inland to handle the changing ocean. People are also trying to restore mangrove ecosystems around the world. Make sure to check out the links below to learn more.